So with the announcement of Future State, which basically amounts to two months of fill-in issues, and, and yeah, that's that's dismissive. I agree. I had a DC writer reach out and say, you're, you're too dismissive when you say this is a fill-in event. Um, you know, that, that makes it sound unimportant. I, I get that. Um, it is a fill-in event for two months before you get back to regular continuity, and I'm sure there will be some elements, and I, I guess I should remind everybody that John Kent, who's a character a lot of people like, came out of Convergence. And so, you know, it's not like these things are completely throwaway, and I'm sure some stuff will happen here. But I'm getting off track. When companies do stuff like this, what are fans and readers supposed to do? What are comic shops supposed to do? Why does this present an interesting problem for shops and for, for readers? Hey everybody, this is Birch. This is a video talking about kind of logistics and, and what do you do. There certainly can be a lot of takes on this video. When I do when I do this topic, the topic I'm about to get into, I often get people going, ah, here he is splitting hairs about details again. And it's um it, it's not about that. It's this is a case of just explaining the steps that you often have to go through that that you know creates a bit of a headache. You know, not a not a earth shaking one, not a you know, businesses are going to go under kind of one, just a headache. And so let me explain. So basically, if you're a comic shop and you have somebody coming in and they're, they've got Superman and Batman on their pull list and every month those are going into their box, what do you do when you hit future state where Batman is, is not Batman, it's a different title? It's, it's, and then, by the way, yes, uh, this certainly happened with the Age of Apocalypse back in the day, and it creates a bit of, a, a bit of chaos in the shop. Do you try and find the title most similar to what your customer was pulling and pull that for them? Do you over-communicate to your customers, hey, this thing's coming out, it's going to interrupt everything, do you want to have these comics in your pull box? You're not going to get anything if you don't, tell, you know, because this is one of those kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situations for subscriptions and for customers. And it kind of is, speaks to sort of the problem that Western comics have gotten themselves into when they go with kind of different marketing stunts and other things, there's not a good mechanism for people to say, I want Batman and just get all the Batman. Now, I should interject at this point that it feels like DC would kind of like to maneuver the ship in this direction a little bit where people start thinking about Batman family and you sign up for Batman. And nobody at Marvel is saying this, but this is kind of how they think about the Dawn of X books. In fact, they're saying the opposite, but their actions are different. They want you to just say, sign me up for all the X books, Dawn of X. If it's fitting under there, sign me up and I'll take it all. That's what they want. And I, that, there's nothing wrong with wanting that as a publisher. Of course, you want to sell as many books as possible. But they haven't quite committed. They haven't quite made the leap yet. Now, European comics have done this quite some time ago when they basically, if they're going to have spinoffs or other things, they keep it enough in the family that it's very straightforward for both shops and collectors to know what to go along with and what not. But at the end of the day, uh, it, you know, what do you do if you're a reader? If you're a collector and you've collected every single issue of Batman, what are you collecting with Future State? Do you break your, I mean, can you dip out and not collect it and it doesn't really matter? Or is it a key part of your run? Well, the, the simple answer, and the answer I'm seeing a lot online right now, is, hey, you don't have to buy this, just don't don't buy it, and you still have a, you know, your when comics resume in March, you're still going to have your complete run, and you can, you know, kind of just go in that direction. Life's good. Which sounds nice, but then you do get situations, like with Convergence, where Jonathan Kent came spinning out of that, and if you are a Superman collector and you've got those issues and you didn't pick up any of Convergence and you didn't pick up those first appearances, you've got a hole now in your collection. So how do you handle that? And I, I mean, just kind of tossing out there, if you are uh, if you're collecting these comics for an omnibus or for a trade, what do you do with these 5G books or 5G future state books? How do you fit all this in? All of this is uh, is is an interesting dilemma that both readers and shops have to deal with. And I guess the the part that I'm interested in, because as I mentioned, it doesn't feel like there's ever been a great answer for this. What do you as a customer want to see when you go to your shop and you have titles on your pull box? Uh, do you want 
the shop to automatically just kind of carry things over? What about when a book relaunches? What about when, uh, say, Captain Marvel reboots with a brand new number one issue? What do you do? As a customer, what do you want your shop to do? Do you want automatically to just keep collecting it? I, I know a lot of customers that have, have gotten upset. I, I finally went to the approach in my shop that when a, a product relaunched, I would put a little paper. I had printed out just these tiny little slips that say, I want to keep collecting this comic when it's relaunched. Yes or no? And I would put it in the box. And then when the customer picked up the books, um, I would say, you know, I, I kind of trained him. I just got to a standard form of, because Marvel is doing it so often. Hey, um, check in your box. There may be a paper in there asking if you want to continue with this series when, um, you know, when it relaunches. And I took the approach of, of opting out. For a long time, I would opt in. If a title rebooted and relaunched, I would just, uh, you know, keep it carrying over for the customer that was, that was saving that was subscribing to it. But I, I had enough complaints and a lot of frustrations. Um, and part of it's, you know, when Marvel or DC says it's a bold new direction, for a lot of customers, they don't want to go along for the ride with the bold new direction. Now, granted, there's plenty of customers that do want to go on that ride, and then they will sign up. But they will always sign up by saying, hey, I want to start collecting, say, Captain Marvel when it relaunches. I don't think I ever heard that. It was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My little joke. Anyway, I definitely had people who, who collected Captain Marvel. At any rate, um, I'd have people come in and say, I want to start getting Captain Marvel. I want to start with the number one issue that's coming out in November. Put me down for that. And I would say, do you want, you know, we still have a bunch of issues on the shelf from the previous run. We're only up to like issue 14 now. Are you sure? Would you like, you know, those as well? And it's like, no, I'm going to just start clean with the new run, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's their choice. It's the customer's choice. But because... People often wanted to jump on at a certain point. That's why I finally went to the approach of getting custom, you know, basically dropping off customers. Now, as as many people tell me, and this is a debate I've had with many, many retailers, you're taking money out of your pocket in theory when you do that, because some people are not going to be paying any attention. They're not going to remember to keep signing up for the new series every time it's rebooted. And you're going to, in effect, drop people off of their list. Um, and that's true. You will definitely get some frustration there. That's why I say it's a damned if you don't, a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. Uh, but the irritation of having these things automatically carry over, for me at least, was with the customers was always greater than the you know the negatives of taking them out. And so that's that's what I did. But it's it's a tough situation, and especially we went through this with convergence, and we're going through this now with future state. What do you do? You know, obviously some are easy. Legion of Superheroes, that's going to have a title in Future State called Legion of Superheroes. Very easy. You just keep that one rolling, no problem. With Flash, eh, probably fairly easy. It's a different Flash, but you still have the Flash book, so, you know, okay, that, that sounds fine. With Batman, you have a much harder problem on your hands. It, you have this, um, this brief series of Batman, but it's not the same Batman title. Meaning, meaning the literal the literal title of the book is not Batman. It's like, I forget what they're calling it. It's, it's something else. And on top of that, you're committing to an increased shipping schedule because there's going to be more of those books, and they're going to be at a higher price point than what you're used to paying. So you have a lot of changes that are going to briefly kind of come in and intercept things. So what do you do? Um, again, I, this is one of those cases where you may say, hey, he's overthinking this, except if you're running a business, you, you kind of have to overthink this. If you don't overthink this, you go out of business. That's, that's kind of that's the drawback of not getting involved in the details here. So how, how, do, you, how do you manage this? How do you assess it? Um, it's a tough situation, but that's, that's really, you know, at the end of the day, kind of where it sits. And then as a collector, what do you do? Do you do you interrupt your run? Do you keep going? Do you try and map it one to one? Would be helpful if DC created a little cheat sheet that said, "Hey, if you collected uh, Aquaman, you're going to need this new Aquaman over here," or you know, this if you're if you're collecting Detective Comics, this is the Batman title you want. If you want, but but there it feels like you're asking the publishers to be way more pedantic and, and in many cases be handcuffed to kind of their continuity and what's going on more than they want to be. They want to be able to explore and try out new things. They just haven't really figured out a good way to address the customer that's coming in and buying every month, which is what everybody wants. The, the comic shop, the distributor, the, the, the publisher, they want that 
but they haven't really found the angle to do it. Or they could just not reboot as much, uh, and it wouldn't be a problem. It, the funny thing is, you know, back when this happened with Age of Apocalypse, it was a headache. But, you know, it, it, it didn't happen. It, we weren't rebooting things all the time, so it wasn't that big a deal. And uh, as, as time has gone by and we've, it's happened more and more and more, it's kind of this ongoing problem now that I think confuses and, and sheds readers a lot more than keeps them. But what do you think? Leave a comment below. What would you do? What do you prefer? What would you like your comic shop to do in this situation? Interested to hear your ideas. I know we have a lot of shop owners, a lot of people who work in shops that listen to this channel, read this kind of stuff. I'm sure they'll be interested too. So thank you for your input. Otherwise, hey, like, subscribe, follow me on social media, send me an email at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.